In Matthew 4.19, Jesus says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Join us in this conversation as we discuss following Jesus, leadership, and doing life with others. Welcome to the 419 Disciple Makers Podcast. And now back to our conversation with Chris Henderson. So most people would say, I'll go to my pastor and he'll tell me how to grow spiritually or a Christian education director or something like that. Is that who Matt was in your life? Was He wasn't, no. And, and I did have these conversations with my pastor at the time. Um, so so it's, a good, it's a good point you're making. Um, I didn't just jump outside my congregation, but I did skip a few details there. Um, Matt was um, part of a discipling coaching organization called 3DM that okay. was founded by Mike Breen. Yeah. Um, and uh, we love his stuff. We yeah. we uh, use we we use a lot. We got several of his books. And and thanks, Mike. Good Amen. work. <laughs> Amen. So 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 that you know, as much as I might have been springboarded in my walk to Emmaus experience, or springboarded in these relationships that I had formed in uh, my congregation, and springboarded in in watching my children grow up in the church, or formed unknowingly by the relationship that Harold Mack had formed with me way back in in high school. Um, the experience of learning to listen to the Holy Spirit moment by moment, recognizing or trying to recognize um, what he might be saying to me, and then reorienting my life, my choices, my pattern of living to be back to being, you know, along the lines of what Jesus was doing or what Jesus is saying or how Jesus lived. Um, I experienced healing and transformation beyond my wildest imagination. Wow. It was so incredibly good that I couldn't wait to share that with someone else. So yeah. I was finally experiencing a gospel moment. It wasn't like a light shining from heaven like the Damascus Road, but um, I realized there's there's power here. Mm-hmm. I'm different moment by moment because I can hear Jesus calling me and I can respond to it and I can feel my spirit actually changing and I have to be able to share this with somebody else. So that drove me into a desire for discipling others and teaching them the practical ways of hearing from and responding to Jesus moment by moment in very everyday situations. You know, that sounds like um, that sounds like a dream come true for a Christian man. So many Christian men think, well, I just got to read the Bible more, or I got to you know, treat people better, or I got to stop doing this, or I got to start doing that, or I need to go to church a little bit more. And somehow doing a few things a little more is going to, you know, really work. But in your case, it was really going outside of what you knew and asking somebody to coach you, Yeah, uh, which sounds like 12 to 18 months. That's a long period of time. But what I'm hearing from you is that it was it, it changed your life. It did. And it's a great example. Um, well, it's a great choice of words for you to say it sounds like a dream come true. But in real practical terms, Mark, it, it included some pain. It included some difficulty. Really? Um, what, you know, what do you mean? Well, so it requires, to follow Jesus, it requires me to confront lies that I'd been telling myself about who I am mm. or to um, come to terms with um, maybe sin behaviors or sin nature or, or bad habits that I had formed um, and submit those to Jesus and, 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 and you know, bring them to the cross and allow um, to take a posture of self-sacrifice. And, and that wow. can be painful. Yeah. Um, so the results are transformative and powerful, but the process is not always happy and, um, and, and feel well, good. That is a great point you're making. You know, think of the Apostle Paul when he said, I want to know Jesus, the power of his resurrection, in the, in the fellowship of his suffering, and to think that, you know, I'll take the good with the bad, or I'll take the bad with the good. Um, you mentioned the word or you mentioned that you were um, learning about yourself or uncovering things about yourself, something like that. I mean, you don't have to go into too much detail with that, but in your work with other men as well now, what have you seen that is a, uh, what have you seen that is keeping men from confronting those lies that they've told themselves or where, or continuing to wear those masks that keep us from the deeper spiritual life? Yeah. <clears throat> I will, I will tell a short story because it's worth bringing my wife into this. My wife and I are, are partnered in virtually everything, right? And we have our ups and downs like anyone else. How many years now you've been married? Uh, um, 27. Put you on the spot, didn't yeah, I? You did. <laughs> <laughs> 28 in May. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've got a long long life together so Amen. far. 
and, and I'm blessed to have her. Um, but a few years ago, she she struggled with some um, some depression and some panic attacks. And um, I knew, we knew that she was struggling with this. We worked together to try to get her some help. And it was the same time that I was being discipled to learn to hear from the Holy Spirit. And I was encountering this difficulty um, with her struggle that I... Um, when I would come home and she was in maybe a weak or, or downtrodden mood, my response to her would be a negative emotion. I would get frustrated and irritable and angry. And mm. this happened over and over and over again. And I didn't want to be irritable. I didn't want to be frustrated and angry when my wife is in a vulnerable state or she's in a, a, a panic um, a state. <clears throat> but I couldn't, couldn't help myself. And a few weeks of struggling with that, of encountering this difficulty over and over and over again, this is one of those tools that I'd learned is a sign that maybe the Holy Spirit wants me to know something about who I am. And through a process, uh, which, which was itself painful, I realized that I had been in a habit of absorbing my wife's strength, of leaning on her when I was feeling vulnerable, of coming home and attempting to absorb her strength in mm. my weakness. And when she wasn't able to be strong for me, it made me very uncomfortable and I didn't wow. know how to cope. Wow! And so I realized the Lord showed, showed me that she can be strong. She is equally yoked. She is your partner, but I am your strength. Come to me mm. with your vulnerabilities. Come to me with your weakness and I will restore you and give you strength, right? So that's one of the examples of understanding who I am and what bad habits I might have been yeah. practicing. Um, that's a good word for a lot of people, I think, too, because, you know, we do tend to lean on our human relationships probably more than we lean on our relationship with the Lord. Um, oftentimes, instead of praying about something, we'll ask somebody else's advice and maybe never even pray about it. We'll just converse and go on the advice of someone else. And and the Lord's there the whole time going, you know, I got the answer here. <laughs> I can see the whole picture, buddy. Um, I'm thinking about Philippians 4.19 as you're speaking where God's, you know, it says, I should, and, and Christ shall meet all of my, or, and God will meet all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Amen. And, but yet we look to other relationships for our needs to be met. And we find that no matter how rich the marriage is or the parenting or whatever, there is no human on this earth that has the ability to meet our needs. Not one. Including the most basic need, which is validation. You're okay. You're loved. You're yeah. worth it. Right? right. We get... Only God can meet all of our needs. Amen. But yet we continue to look other places, right? Because that, that's what we do. <laughs> so you asked the question about maybe ex examples from lives of other men. Um, mm -hmm. Great friend of mine. We still are in contact, but he's back in Texas. Um, powerful experience for him was when we were looking at Jesus's life and the way he had a regular rhythm of resting, spending time alone with the Father, and being out at work in the kingdom and bringing the kingdom of healing and power to the people around him. So there's this regular rhythm of rest and work and rest and work that we can see in Jesus's life. Hmm. We ourselves fall victim to the performance-driven culture that says we have to always be at work and resting is a weakness. Um, so if we can't even get our own sense of restorative, regenerative rest in Christ sort of as a priority, then we'll never be able to experience the fullness of his blessings. And so um, the way we typically, um, in a worldly fashion, substitute quality rest and abiding in Christ is with things like recreation, procrastination, avoidance, mm -hmm. um, or everyone's favorite, you know, alcohol and chemical <laughs> induced uh, states, right? So yeah. we, we go to we go to chemical substances to give us a sense of escape or rest from our worries. Mm -hmm. And when I shared that truth with a guy that I was investing some time in a discipling relationship with, his eyes opened and mm -hmm. he almost had a cold shudder and said, oh my God, you've just revealed my deepest secret. And he said, I have been a functioning alcoholic for decades Wow. And I can't beat it. I don't know how to get past this. And we talked through that. You know, I offered to share time and to go through the counseling programs with him to share that burden and to do whatever it was uh, that he thought he needed in terms of a, a loving and supporting relationship from me. But it wasn't until his own sister, um, who lived in another state from him, um, we'd, we'd been in a discipling relationship for about eight or nine months, to, learning to hear from Jesus, learning to reorient our choices back towards Jesus. And he saw his sister struggling with alcoholism too. And his love for his sister and his desire for his sister to know wow. who Jesus is, where he finally said, 
I'm going to go to Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm going to join with my sister. We're going to go mm. through this together. That's great. And his desire to disciple his sister, which finally made it possible for him to heal wow. himself or to be healed himself um, through Jesus. And now he's been sober for 18 months and All right. was able to experience the um, loss of his father over the Christmas break mm. with peace and joy and to see his and father sobriety. and sobriety. Exactly. And not to feel like it was a tragedy in his entire life. So yeah, several stories like that where individual healing and overcoming what normally would have been um, impossible to beat uh, situations, but through the power of Jesus in their practical everyday lives gives them the power to do so. Yeah. Gosh, that is that, you know, to me, that is so appealing for, for folks to, you know, it's the invitation to discipleship. It's really the invitation to transformation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's, it's to, to change uh, everything about our lives, uh, painful maybe, but yet in the end, it's the only way to become like like Christ. Patrick Morley said in a book he wrote not long ago um, called The Christian Man that he believed that uh, a Bible, a small group, and serving someone would solve 90% of a man's problems. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And when I first read that, I thought, well, that's a little oversimplistic. But you know what? When you take the Word of God and you start unpacking it together with a group of men that you can trust, uh, or if you're a woman with a group of women, and, and, you, uh, and, you're, and you begin to have a servant's heart towards some individual or some group, that probably will change a lot of our issues, won't it? It's a good place to start. It's a good place <laughs> to start, absolutely. So, uh, Chris, in your experience, you um, uh, met this guy, and you... Um, Started down this this coaching route. He was coaching you, I guess. Was this online? Or? It was. Yeah, it was a virtual meeting. We were video chatting. Yeah, and um, you were exposed to what you've been sharing with me, which are a lot of symbols. Now it's going to be hard for us to do that, of course, on a podcast. Um, but tell us a little bit about what you've learned about how to personally um, grow in Christ based on the coaching that you received from the the three D. Uh, what's it called again? Three DM. Three DM. Yeah. DMs. Um, I've never been really good at memorizing scripture, Mark, and, and repeating scripture. And even if I was very good at it, it's not very practical, um, a tool on day-to-day situations. You know, what does it mean to say, don't cast your pearls before swine right. um, when I'm having a tr- difficult relationship at work? Yeah. Right? I, um, maybe I can make up a, you know, a, a connection between that verse and the difficulty that I'm having at work, but it's not really a direct connection for me. It wasn't really something I could apply in practical terms. Mm. So um, these 3DM, Mike Breen, um, developed these patterns, these shapes, these icons, if you will, to help us recall the truths that are manifest in Jesus, not just in the things he said, but also in the patterns of his life. Like I just gave an example of the way he was constantly in a rhythm of rest and work. Um, many of the truths that are Jesus can, are represented in these um, two-dimensional shapes that are easy to recall. They're easy to remember. Um, and they just look like symbols of they some They just kind, look like, like a two-dimensional symbol. And a box yeah. and things like that. Exactly. Um, so like a, um easy way to remember the Lord's Prayer, Lord's Prayer is more than just words that we recite verbatim the way Jesus gave them to the disciples, but it also forms a, a pattern for prayer, for acknowledging God for being who he is and for asking for his kingdom to come and looking for forgiveness and protection and healing and and provision for daily needs, right? So, so there's six sort of facets to the Lord's Prayer that map very nicely to a six-sided shape, like a hexagon that you can easily remember. Mm. And then you can cast all your prayer concerns through this same model Mm. in a circular fashion and walk with Jesus through this, you know, through a prayer concern using this hexagonal shape. So um, there are a number of shapes like that where um, easy to recall, easy to remember, easy to apply truth. But they also give you a, a, a power to assess your own yourself or your relationships mm-hmm. or a situation that you might be going through. Um, so, uh, for example, there's a square shape that helps us to remember or to recognize how Jesus led his disciples from basic fishermen, non-scholarly, non-men leading type people, all the way into the ability to form the church and to lead, you know, a worldwide transformation. Mm -hmm. There are four major steps that he carried those disciples through in his time of training them in an immersive type uh, of an environment. Um, And so we can see that pattern and we can recognize where we are 
in that square. We can recognize where people that we might be leading are in that square. Mm -hmm. We can use it as a guidepost for where to go next um, or maybe to do some corrective action and to understand where Jesus might be leading us um, in a current situation. We can also use it to recognize bad examples, non-Jesus-like leadership. Most, mm -hmm. most, uh, most of us are familiar with leadership styles that are my way or the highway. Right. Or here, I'll tell you to do something and then throw you into the deep end and you better sink or swim, better yeah. figure it out on your own. That's a particularly bad example of leadership that doesn't reflect Jesus's style of leadership, which was yeah. patiently walking with people, inviting them into his presence, explaining what he was going to do, challenging them to do the things that he was doing, and then being there and present for them when they failed, mm -hmm. full of grace and acceptance to say, here's how you might learn from that experience, and then you walk away changed and be different as a result of it. Um, those those shapes, I think, are so intriguing to me. And when you first started showing them to me, I think we were sitting in a breakfast shop somewhere and right. you were dri dribbling on, or uh, uh, doodling on your iPad or something. And I remember seeing those and thinking, you know, it's pretty creative to take Jesus's teachings and Jesus's process and put them into different shapes that you can recall easily uh, to use even in your own life. And so... Um, as we're talking about these things, I know it's hard for you guys out there listening to visualize this maybe, but uh, one of the things you can do is go to the app, um, Chris, that you have uh, developed, and they can go to the app store on their iPhone and and download it. And it's all the shapes are right there, right? Yeah. And it's called, uh, remind us again what it's called? Yeah, the app is called Life Shapes. It's free and uh, uh, available on any iOS device. Uh, if you're on Android, you know, we'd have to get you a, a, another ex form of a web browser type form because I just don't have the skill to do the Android oh, okay. development. But yeah, Life Shapes on the App Store. Um, go down, go download it, and there's uh, several examples there. Every one of the shapes is there. Um, yeah, I've been looking, I downloaded it yeah. and been looking at it, and it is, it's not um, complete enough to look at yourself and get the whole thing, of course, but there is scripture there that goes with it, and then a story that goes with each shape, and I found it ex exceptionally helpful. Um, when, when it comes to um, some of the resources maybe that 3DM has put out, uh, books maybe by Mike Breen, um, which ones do you find would, or think would be the most helpful if somebody wanted to look more into this process? Great question. So the first is uh, Covenant and Kingdom by Mike Breen. <clears throat> Very simple read, but he lays out the mapping of um, these concepts uh, that form the basis for every one of the shapes um, in Covenant and Kingdom and shows you uh, from the Old Testament, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, the, how, how those um, patterns can be seen um, hmm. throughout all of Scripture. And then the next one would be building a discipling culture where each of the shapes themselves are um, described in detail and um, how to apply them. But but a word of a gentle word of caution here, um, Mark. So as you mentioned, you know, downloading the app, I certainly encourage everyone to do that. Um, but we have a culture today where we read about something and we think we know something mm -hmm. that we can go and do, and <laughs> and we can see in Jesus's model of teaching that that's not what he did. He set an example. He taught. And then he challenged them to go and do the things that he was doing himself. Um, so reading about something is a great place to start. But um, I would encourage um, folks, if they're interested in that, to find someone who's either been discipled in these methods or mm -hmm. in, in these shapes or to reach out to you know someone here at uh, Mount Pisgah maybe. And um, let's follow up and have a, have a conversation about what it looks like to be immersed in an environment where learning is um, person to person and not just reading you know, words on a page. Yeah, absolutely. I think a little coaching even goes a long way if you know somebody to really help you process these things. And so that is one of the the uh, resources that we offer at 419 disciplemakersorg You can go there and there's a lot of um, things to download. Of course, this Life Shapes app that you can download to see those. And then you can contact us. All of our contact information is there and we want to help you uh, as you're on this journey. To, uh, we're on this journey together. To live out the Great Commission is a lifestyle, and um, I, I pray that you're doing that. And if you don't know how, well, there's a bunch of us that would love to help you figure that out. And so that's why we are here. That's why we do this podcast. And so I hope if today has been meaningful for you, uh, or the last session even, that you'll share it with someone, uh, send it to somebody, and uh, and then give us your feedback on how we could better serve you, how we could help you. Because our our goal, literally, is to bring this conversation to the forefront of the church. The church has been talking about a lot of irrelevant things uh, over the years, and we want to bring this concept of 
how to make disciples to the forefront. And so, Chris, I appreciate you uh, coming today. I, we could talk forever. Uh, let me ask you this question. I want you to leave, leave our listeners with this, okay, with your, your response to this question. Let's say there's somebody that's uh, sitting in a church pew. They're going. To, uh, they're experiencing some. You know, they have a. They know Jesus. They may not know a lot about Jesus, and they are trying to figure out what's next for them, how to grow in their faith life. What would you advise them to do? So, pray is the first step, of course. Um, be prepared for God to answer your prayer. Pray with expectation. Hmm. Believe he's actually going to break into your reality and answer your prayer. And you might need a couple of reassurances, but it will be a surprising um, answer. It might be the word another person uses to connect to something that you had already on your heart. It might be a vision that you get in your own mind. It might be a scripture that jumps out to you when you're reading. Uh, It might be something that you find yourself repeatedly encountering, like a stumbling block, or it could be something that stops you dead in your tracks, like Mm. a light shining from the road to Mm -hmm. to Damascus. Mm -hmm. But be prepared for God to actually answer your prayer. And then pay attention to what scares you about (laughs) where you think you want to go and then all the reasons that you give yourself for saying, no, that's (laughs) not me or I'm not going or I won't be safe. And when you get those prompts that say, I won't be safe and I shouldn't go there, go there. Wow, good word right there. And allow the Lord to do what God has always dreamed for us, and that is that we would come to know him uh, in every facet, right? And experience experience the presence of Jesus in our everyday lives. Well, God bless you for listening to this podcast. Um, if you if you missed the first episode, go back and hear that. And um, thank you, Chris, for being with us. And uh, I just want to say that I see the Lord in your life. I see the Lord in your words. And uh, I'm excited about what God's going to be continuing to do uh, not only through this podcast, but also just in your personal life. So thank you for being so faithful. Thank you, Mark. You've blessed me, and I really look forward to discovering it with you. (laughs) Yeah. Praise God. Well, God bless you, and have a wonderful day. For more information, check out our website, 419disciplemakers.org. Join us again next week as we continue our conversation on the 419 Disciple Makers podcast.